Hello, it's Keith here and this is lesson 59 of the platform specific series of my Z80 programming tutorials. We're going to be looking at the MSX again this week and this is a request from a Patreon backer. They wanted me to cover hardware scrolling on the MSX. Now Chibi Akamas did do scrolling but that was software scrolling. The entire screen was redrawn effectively every frame. So I'd never looked at hardware scrolling on the MSX and it is a little tricky because it does vary depending on the platform you're using. If you're on the MSX1, the MSX2 or the MSX2 Plus even, they have different options available and also there are some fluctuations depending on if you're using the tile map or if you're using the MSX2's bitmap screens it does differ again so I've created some little examples we're going to look at today that are going to show the different options on each system and are going to allow you to see how the tile map works and how the bitmap graphics work with scrolling okay let's go over to the code and let's see what we've got then okay so I've got these two examples, MSX1 scroll and MSX2 scroll, and these are based on the um, simple samples where we were showing a bitmaps to the screen. Now, there are different versions and there's different sections here we're going to have to enable and disable depending on the test that we want to do. So let's first of all just disable all of them and let's run this first example. And this is a tile map example. Now, most of the scrolling options do work the same on both systems. Now, the only slight difference is, of course, if we're using tile map related stuff, um, the bitmap screen isn't a tile map. So here is the first example here. We've got the Chibico character here and here, we've got two copies, and this is unscrolled. Now, this is almost the exact same example as before, but there is one slight difference. Now, before when we were showing the Chibico character to the screen, we were setting the tiles on the tile map directly. Now we're actually using a buffer at memory address C000. We've got a buffer of the tile map and our commands to fill area with tiles is now setting the tiles in that buffer. There it is. It's pretty much the same, but we're now just loading into a destination memory address rather than writing to VRAM. And then we are transferring VRAM to the screen with this out DE command here, which will transfer the entire buffer to the screen. Now, why are we doing this? Well, this is the first of the problems. The MSX1 essentially has no hardware scrolling. So the only way we can scroll our screen is to have a buffer and to copy that buffer offsetting by one tile will effectively make it scroll to the left one and offsetting by 32 will move it up or down depending on how the offset works. Okay, well, first of all, let's just show that off if I just um, remove the rem from here. Now, here's the test code we've got. We've got a little delay here to slow things down. We are copying to the tile map in VRAM from the VDP buffer in memory. We're copying 768 bytes, which is the size of one tile map and we're going to then change an offset here. The offset is being held in DE here, and we're going to increase it by one. So this is effectively changing the starting position of the data that's being copied, and this is going to affect a scroll of the tile map. Let's fire this up and let's see what happens on the MSX1. Okay, so here it comes. So here you can see that we're effectively scrolling to the left by one each time because of that ink DE here. Now, if I change the command to a deck DE, and I run again, well, now you can see we're scrolling in the opposite direction. Now, of course, there will be extra bytes being shown to the screen that are outside the typical 768 of the defined buffer. So we would need some extra space to have the new tiles that are being drawn in and we'd need to do some kind of reset at some point because eventually our entire screen, screen would be scrolled off if we kept scrolling like that. Now when of course we're scrolling we would need to start drawing in one side of the screen with the new tiles if we were trying to, to do a Super Mario style game you'll notice in Super Mario 3 as the game scrolls you can often see the new tiles being drawn in at the far right hand side of the screen as you're running to the right. So you would need to do something like that in software, but this is not covering that. This is just showing the scrolling effect. So there we've moved by one tile, effectively moving to the left or the right. However, we can add 32 here. And if we do this, you will see we're now scrolling up. So we're moving by one line because of course one line is 32. And if I change this to minus 32, well, we're now scrolling down. So you can see we can scroll the screen just by changing the offset of the source, or of course the destination, within the tile map video memory that we're copying our cache to, and that will give a software scroll. 
So that's the first option and that's really the only option on the MSX1 there. Now the MSX2 does have an extra option that we can combine with this to give a slightly better effect. Now there is a shifting option which will offset the position of the screen. Now this uses a single register, register 18 in the video registers, and it uses one nibble for the X offset and one nibble for the Y offset here. Now in this case, we're gonna be changing the X offset and you will just see what happens. Now I'm gonna run this on the MSX1 emulation where you can see that it doesn't work and that's because this register simply doesn't exist. But if I run this on the MSX2, even though it's still going to look like an MSX1 graphics game, it's now going to have, you can see, there's this very slow moving of the entire screen. Now that's not affecting the tile map, that's affecting the screen. That's moving to the left there. You can see it just actually rolled over because um, we're repeatedly adding 1 to X and eventually it will increase Y as well. But of course we can um, do both and we can make this scroll in any direction we want just by adding or subtracting as required. So you can see now it's moving diagonally. Um, again, though, is, you're probably thinking, well, how, how's that help? You know, it's not, it's not really a very useful thing. And, you know, you, you might be right. But what we can do now, you see, is we can combine that with the software scroll because the software scroll was moving in eight black pixel blocks because it was a software tile map. But if we then move seven pixels with shifts and then bounce back and then do our software scroll combining the two, well, we'll still get a very chunky um, update of the tiles, but it'll look nice and smooth in the meantime. And I've got this example here to show you what I mean. It's, it's probably easier to see it actually running. Okay, so here it comes. So this time what we're doing is we're doing effectively a series of X shifts here using that shift register. And then we're doing a soft refresh of the tile map when that eighth shift occurs. So you can see here, it looks nice and smooth, but the, the tile map isn't, the, the, the tiles are sort of jumping every eight and that's just a limitation of really all we can do to be honest so there you go you can see that's the option we've got there now how does that work well it's quite simple really what we've got here is we've got the three bits we're taking here the low part of e and we're using that as the shift register here and then we're taking the remainder and using that shifted to the right to the bottom part of DE and we're using that as an offset for our soft scroll here. So that's what we're doing there. So that's how we can use the MSX2 to combine a MSX1 style tile map and give it a nice smoother scroll. And I believe there's been some MSX games that have been updated for the MSX2. You know, the your sort of games like R-Type and things, the classic ones that have given been given better scrolling thanks to this kind of trick. I've not looked into the code, but I assume that's what they're doing. Now, um, the MSX2 does offer us a very um, complete, a proper vertical scroll. So um, we can, as well as doing that option of a software tile map and a shift register, we can actually now vertically scroll things quite smoothly. So let's just try that out. This is using register 23 here. And all we need to do is give a, an offset value. And you can see here, we've got a wonderful scroll, smooth scroll here. And this is smooth scrolling the tile map very effectively. Now we can do that vertical scroll on the MSX2, but we can't do a horizontal scroll. Um, we can do one on the MSX2 Plus. So this is where we get into the MSX2 Plus territory. And here is the example for that. Now, this one actually uses a couple of registers. Um, 25 is relevant, but we'll discuss what that does later. 26 takes a total of six bits and 27 takes the bottom three bits. So these are the bottom bits and these are the top bits. And that it adds up to a total of 512 pixels, which might seem a bit weird because the screen's only 256 wide. Well, we'll find out why that is in just a moment. So this is only going to work on the MSX2 Plus, but we'll see this in action now. So we're taking three of the bits here from E and we're using those as a shift. And we are using the remaining ones here. And you can see now we're scrolling smoothly to the right. Now this is being done by the hardware. That's not me doing this. So this is not any kind of software scrolling trick. This is purely the hardware doing the work here. So now you can see we've got this horizontal scroll there. Now, to be honest, this effect will work a lot better if we go to our second example here. Well, let's just get everything disabled first and let's see this example as it is and see what it does. Okay, so here is the MSX2 bitmap screen example. 
And you can see we've got a couple of Chibiko characters here and some corruption. And I've actually drawn a few off screen for a reason we'll find out in a moment. Now, most of these options do actually work in the same way, although we wouldn't really want to use the offsets. We can also do the hardware vertical scroll. The um, software tile map isn't going to work on this one because uh, we have no software tile map. It's a bitmap screen. You could do a software bitmap shift, moving the entire bitmap screen by one pixel each time or something, but it would be very slow. You could do it though if it was all you needed. So here you can see we're doing the vertical hardware scroll again of the MSX2. And then the final one we're going to look at is the horizontal scroll of the MSX2 Plus. It's this one here. Let's just enable that. And I'm just going to check some options up here. You see, we've got some options here. So first of all, let's just set this to zero. Now this is option 20, register 25, and this is the sort of last part of this potential thing here. Now I've actually changed to a different settings here. Uh, this is page one of the video memory and you can see we've got just two Chibiko characters and they're scrolling around the screen over and over again here. Now you'll notice though when they go off the far right of the screen they kind of appear in eight pixel strips here on the left hand side. Now I believe this is so that you could redraw part of the screen while it's invisible if you were if you were doing this. But um, basically, as I say, there, there is that kind of eight pixel hidden strip there. Now we can turn that off if we disable the mask. And this is done with register 25. We just set bit one here to a one. And if we run this now, and here it comes. There we go. So you can see now we're scrolling once again. It goes off the screen and now it appears on this side of the screen and it's completely smooth. There's no kind of jerky updating there. So that's um, a lot nicer. Now this is scrolling a 256 pixel wide image repeating each time, but we do have the option to scroll a 512 pixel one. If I just enable this here and I run again, this is now using two pages and it's also using no mask. So there's our original image and it's disappearing, but something new is coming in. And it's that second image with the two Chibicos here. And then they'll disappear off this side and the first image will start coming back again. So we're now scrolling effectively a 512 pixel wide image. And we can also, if we were really feeling frisky, we could enable the harder MSX2 vertical scroll because remember that horizontal scroll is an MSX2 plus feature. And if we run again now, well, now we're going in both directions. Now we're effectively scrolling a 512 by 256 sized image here. And um, this is, I believe, the best that we can do on the MSX2. And it's very good indeed. So um, that's the sort of top option for the MSX2 Plus. As I say, the um, horizontal scroll isn't available on the MSX2. But um, you could always use a software scroll option by effectively you know, as I say, doing a, an image copy from here to here, or as Chibi Akamas did, recalculating all the graphics that made up the original image. If that's faster, it's going to depend on your game. So there we go. So to my knowledge, that's all the options available on the MSX1, MSX2 and MSX2 Plus. What I'd ask you to do is, you know, go to my website, download the source codes and have a go with them because there's a lot of options here and um, maybe you'll find something that's useful. Anyway, I hope you found this interesting. I thought it was quite fun. It was, like, it was something I was never planning to look at because um, I tend to just stick to software scroll because it's easier when you're porting games to multiple systems. But um, it was a request and it was a perfectly valid request. So here is my answer. Anyway, I hope you've liked this. If you have, you know, please like and subscribe. So I always say, if you like the videos, then it will help YouTube. It encourages them to recommend them to other people. And if you subscribe, it encourages me to make more videos because it takes a lot of research time and a lot of programming and things. So anyway, whatever you do, I hope you enjoy your programming projects. I wish you all the best with them. Thanks for watching today and goodbye.